Sam Price from Sideline Sports. Hi, Brady. Um, is there any particular type of offense that you would like to work with or specific QB? Uh, so I actually play defense. Is that what you're, oh, excuse uh, me. I don't really understand what you're asking. Um, if, is there several defensive programs that are having to start over? For example, Dallas, are you interested in going to a team that has to rebuild and have you talked to Dallas? Um, I mean, I haven't really talked to Dallas about um, much of their schemes or anything, really. Um, but no, there's not really a specific team that, you know, I really want to go to. I mean, I'm open to go, honestly, whichever team wants to take a chance on me and that, you know, believes in me. There's not really, you know, a city or a defense or a coach or whatever that, you know, I want to play for. I just want to play football today, um, regardless of, you know, where that's at or who that's for. So. All right. Thank you so much. Alex Fleming, Florida Sun. How you doing, sir? Alex Fleming, Florida Sun. Um, big bodied wide receivers are big in the Pac-12. Not necessarily speed demons, but big bodies. Is that going to prepare you for the receivers that you're going to face in the future in the AFC and the NFC South? I mean, regardless, you're playing against people that are going to be big and there's going to be guys that are small. I mean, Tariq Hill is one of the best receivers in the NFL. And he's not like a huge dude. So um, for me personally, I'm not really worried about, you know, playing against guys like DK Metcalf. I know that those are guys that are just like freaky big, but uh, I mean, I feel like I'm mentally and physically prepared to play against, you know, whoever the guys are, whether they're super fast or just super strong and uh, medium speed or whatever. I mean, yeah. Those two. Thank you. Sorry, 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 sorry. A reminder, mute yourselves if you uh, ask, you have to ask, uh, after you have to ask a question. Uh, Max Torres, Ducks Digest. Hey, Brady, want to talk a little bit about the uh, defensive back culture at Oregon. You know, we've had guys like TJ Ward come through the program. Uh, what was that like for you uh, during your time in Eugene? Yeah, I mean, it was really cool. We had uh, Patrick Chung and TJ Ward. They actually came um, by the facility and we got to meet them and stuff. So that was really cool. Um, but as far as just the culture and stuff, I mean, Oregon's always been kind of known for having, you know, really good defensive backs and stuff. And I feel like, you know, we had a really good group of DBs, you know, when I was there and we kind of took it upon ourselves, like, hey, you know, we got to keep this legacy going because there's going to be guys that, you know, are going to be counting on us to, you know, continue to keep, you know, promoting like a good defensive back group. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I feel like our DB group did a good job of, you know, trying to keep that culture going and keep, you know, that DB group continuing to get better. I mean, you can see the recruits we're getting in now. I mean, Oregon's just going to keep on, you know, going up each and every year. So um, I feel like, you know, our group did a really good job of, you know, working really hard and, you know, really getting some good DBs, you know, now going to the NFL. So that's really cool um, to just to see the culture keep on getting better. Gonzalo Fabri, no huddle. Hey, Brady, here Gonzalo from No Huddle in Argentina. My question is, uh, what, uh, which are your goals uh, entering these uh, 20 days uh, until the NFL draft? Uh, which uh, goals do you have in mind or, or what uh, do you think you, you can uh, improve on? Uh, I mean, I had a lot of um, goals going into pro day and stuff. I knew I wanted to hit a certain amount of numbers and stuff. And, um, you know, I really felt like I hit the numbers that I wanted to hit. I mean, I could have hit, you know, better's number, obviously, but I was a very, I was very satisfied, you know, with the goals that I had for my numbers and uh, my statistics and stuff. But as far as, you know, the next couple of days and next couple of weeks, I'm just trying to, you know, let my body rest a little bit, um, obviously get in the weight room a little bit, get on the field, but yeah, really trying to um, rest a little bit before, you know, I have to go to mini camp and stuff like that. But um, I do have obviously a goal of, you know, getting drafted. I, I mean, I don't really know what round or whatever, I'm, I'm not, you know, expecting to get drafted, you know, first pick in the draft, I'm not unrealistic like that. Um, but I'm just, you know, hoping that I can hear my name called, but I definitely want to keep, you know, my body ready and prepared. So whenever I hear my name called and you know, whatever team I go to, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, go compete for a spot and stuff like that and go make a team. So, I mean, that's really what I've been doing and I'm going to keep doing the next couple of weeks is kind of rest, but um, continue to get my body more prepared for the NFL. Matthias Onelius. Thank you. Uh, Brady, here's Matheus Ornelas from Time Out here in Brazil. Uh, congratulations for going for the NFL draft. Uh, 
during the pro day, uh, any team uh, talk to you about maybe doing a transition for the linebacker because you are really physical safety that can make a lot of tackles in the line of scrimmage. The, any NFL team talk to you about it or a, even you think it about it and playing the linebacker on the next level? Um, no, I've never been asked uh, by any team to play linebacker yet, but um, at the end of the day, if they ask me, hey, would you want to play linebacker? That's where we see you, you know, best fit on our team, then I would make the switch. I mean, I'm a guy that can kind of um, – I played linebacker at Oregon a little bit for one year, um, and I feel like, I mean, wherever they want to put me on the field, I'm willing to, you know, change position if I have to. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a safety, and I, I truly believe I'm a good enough safety to play in the NFL. Um, but if a team really thought that they could give me more playing time at linebacker, then I guess I would switch. But I still believe deep down, I mean, I'm a safety at the end of the day. I can come in and play the box, but I can also cover people. So, um, yeah, that would be a good question um, to be asked by a coach, but I've never been asked that question. I feel like a lot of the coaches, you know, believe that I'm a good enough safety as well, so they don't really see a reason for a position change or anything like that. Thank you. Good luck. Ryan Thorberg, Mr. Guard. Thank you. Hey, Brady, uh, good to see you virtually again. I uh, hope you're doing well. I was wondering, having played with Justin or against him since high school and with Troy Dye, does in some way seeing some of your peers, your friends have success, give you confidence that you can play in the league as well? Hey, I love the hair. I love how it's long now. Uh, but yeah, to answer to your question, um, yeah, it definitely gives you confidence, you know, seeing some of your buddies, you know, really performing well in the NFL and stuff like that. Um, yeah, especially seeing Justin and Troy. I mean, those are two that um, competed with them and everything like that and was able to hang with them. So it really does give you confidence as well because it's like they can make it, then I know I can make it as well. Um, but it is cool just to see your buddies going out there and getting, you know, rookie of the year and stuff like that. So it's it, it's definitely um, exciting for me, but I think it, it gives me and my teammates, you know, obviously confidence as well. Like, hey, we're guys from, you know, the state of Oregon, grew up in Oregon and played at Oregon. And now, you know, those guys are getting shots in the NFL. So it gives us confidence as well. So, yeah. James Krapia, the Oregonian. Brady, just take us back to your decision-making process uh, to opt out because uh, for those of us who saw you, obviously, man, I mean, you closed last year phenomenally, uh, but it's still – grand scheme of things, a relatively small sample by way of playing time for teams to, to base your film off of other than you know, certainly the Rose and the Pac-12 title game. I'm, I'm assuming is two games you're, you're telling teams to look at. So just go back to your thought process and, and what you referenced in terms of games uh, for teams to take a look at. Yeah, sorry, you were cutting out a little bit during that question, but um, I'm guessing what you were kind of asking is you know, my decision process and everything. So yeah, really what came down to it just such a short you know process of you know trying to make a decision to come back in and play or whatever I mean obviously Chris Ball and the whole coaching staff did like the best possible job to help us you know to be able to play and stuff um, but then you know when it came down to it in August we were told season was canceled this and that we were super frustrated as seniors and stuff and I could tell the whole Oregon coaching staff was frustrated because they did every type of process we could to make it to where we could play but then the Pac-12 still for whatever dumb reason they decided to, you know, call off the season and stuff. So, I mean, we said our goodbyes, you know, we were hugging the coaches, hugging the players and stuff, you know, us seniors, we thought we were never going to play for Oregon ever again, you know? So I moved out of my apartment, moved back to uh, Lake Oswego, was living with my parents, kind of getting ready to start training um, and getting ready, yeah, for the NFL process and everything like that. So mentally I was like checked out. And then five weeks later um, I get a phone call like, Hey, you need to be here tomorrow. You know, we got, you know, practice tomorrow. We got a game in four weeks, so you got to be here and start training and stuff. And it was just, like, such a short notice and stuff. And, yeah, that's really just what came down to it. I mean, I was obviously really frustrated at the Pac-12. Um, and when I talked to my Oregon coaches, they all understood. I mean, we were all frustrated. The Oregon coaches were frustrated, too. We were like, dude, why the heck? We were ready to play. We were on pace. We were doing all the protocols and everything that they asked us to do. But then – the you know Pac-12 really handled it in a terrible way and you know canceled our season and stuff so we were definitely frustrated about that but that's what it came down to just you know such short notice and then six games I mean I didn't really see the point of it there's I felt like I was mentally and physically ready you know for the NFL and then to have everything canceled and stuff I was just I was frustrated but I'm definitely happy with my decision I feel like you know I made the best decision for me and my family and stuff and you know still happy and glad that I made that decision for sure. 
All right, Brady, appreciate your time. We got to move on to Austin Fowlew. Good luck.